Good morning, prayer warriors. It's good to come to you on this Tuesday morning. Amen. I'm ready to pray with you and for you for the needs that you've presented overnight and the needs that we have continued to pray about for many days. Psalms 34, verse 4, on my heart this morning. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Amen. Such a powerful thing in this enterprise of seeking the Lord. If we seek him, we will find him. And when we pray, it's important for us to remember that this is not only a discipline, and it is a spiritual discipline, but it also is a sure connection to our Heavenly Father. When we pray, our God hears us, and our God does answer our prayers. Aren't you glad that you know that this morning? It's so good to see you signing on here with me this morning, good to see my sister with us this morning, and Sylvia, Josh Rogers, God bless you this morning, uh, signing on from Indiana. My brother-in-law, Ben, is with us, and I see people quickly signing on, Sister Pam Pulliam. God bless each and every one of you as we begin this day the right way with prayer, seeking the Lord and trusting in his deliverance. And good to see Carmen joining in with us here this morning. Um, we have many prayer requests and some praise reports mixed in with those. And uh, first of all, I want to mention to you Brother Eli Hernandez, who we've been praying for for many weeks now. Uh, he's been in the hospital for, I guess, 42 or 43 days. And you all know the uh, situation that I've been updating you on day by day. And they expected him to die just a few days ago. And um, the Lord worked a miracle that he remains yet alive. And he began to respond some a couple of days ago. And the latest update we have is that he remains in critical condition due to his long battle with coronavirus. However, yesterday, compatible plasma antibodies were administered. His kidneys are beginning to heal, and he's slowly being brought off sedation once again. So in this up and down battle, uh, his wife and his family cherish your prayers, and let's keep believing God together that his perfect will uh, would be done in that situation. We want you to keep remembering Bishop Hibbert from Newburgh, New York, uh, James and Irma Campbell, and Jessica, all with coronavirus. And uh, Carmen submitted a new request this morning for missionary Judy McCarthy. Uh, her mother, her father, and her sister all are battling coronavirus. Uh, her mom and sister are making good progress, but her father has other health issues and is really struggling right now as his body is not fighting the disease in the same way as the others. And so let's hold that family up in prayer this morning. We want to pray for protection for all of the essential workers and all of the quote-unquote non-essential workers. Like I said, I don't really like that term. I like the way Governor Parson articulated it when he reopened Missouri. He said all businesses are essential businesses in Missouri. And of course, we know what they're saying. We're talking about people that when there's shelter-in-place orders, they, they cannot observe that because they have to go out on the front lines. Um, but yet, um, we understand that there, you know, the economy, the uh, drawing a paycheck, all that is important to each and every one of us. And we want to pray for all of our workers today, and especially those on the front lines, believing God for a full economic recovery. We know the answer is not in policy, although it helps to have good policies, have policies that are directed with wisdom from God. But ultimately, we must trust in the Lord for the answer to these complex situations and we're doing that. And that's why we can have such great confidence regardless of what the great economic minds project. We know our God is able to intervene. So let's pray for wisdom and guidance for our president today and for all those working with him, uh, our leaders in government today, um, that God would move upon them and direct them. 
in Jesus' name. We want to pray for an ease of, of the strain on our health care system. And I believe that's beginning to happen. And we want the supply chain to remain intact. Pray for our truck drivers and, and our grocery store workers and all those that are, that are working so diligently uh, to keep things uh, going. We want to pray for um, the reopening of our different states, all on different timelines, all unique situations. We want to pray that as that happens, there would be no resurgence of this virus and uh, continue to pray for developments in the area of vaccine and treatments. And there's very promising things there, but um, I believe the Lord is bringing us through this. We're not, never going to be the same because that's not God's intention. And if you, um, if you want to know more of what God has shown me in that regard, you ought to go back to our church webpage and watch uh, this past Sunday's sermon, Forming Another Vessel. And I believe that will help you with your perspective. Tara is requesting special prayer for her friend Beverly today. Beverly is one of those battling cancer that we've been praying for daily. She's going uh, into the hospital today and will be having surgery tomorrow. So let's remember her, especially today in prayer. Sylvia needs our prayers. She's very stressed out due to issues going on with her sons. And we know the Lord's able to help her today. We want to continue to pray for Adam Lane. He's on dialysis and on a respirator due to a sudden illness. This is not a coronavirus, but this is something possibly relating to underlying pancreatitis, and he just developed all kinds of snowballing issues and is now battling C. diff infection as well. So his family needs our prayers and um, our encouragement today as well. Jonathan Tucker's needing to go back to work. Elizabeth Riggins needs a miracle in her job situation. Brother Tom Arnold's mother is in stage four kidney failure. So we want to remember her today. We want to pray for comfort for uh, Brother Carlton Kuhn and his family during their time of grief and loss due to his father's passing. We want to continue to pray for Ben and Star today as they're dealing with structural damage to their home from the severe storms that came through here on Sunday uh, and the tree that toppled onto their house. And uh, let's just pray for God's help with the insurance matters and all that that's going on right now. Marsha Moore and Pam Pulliam need our continued prayers for their children. And I know they appreciate so much your faithful prayers for, for them and for their families. Pam Bunch is asking for us to continue to pray for her father-in-law who's battling cancer and for her mother who has stomach issues. And we're believing God for good reports as we continue to pray in Jesus' name um, and intercede for the answers. We have so many with physical needs, ongoing afflictions and battles that they're dealing with. We want to continue to remember them. Gerald Yeely, uh, that he would recover fully from his brain surgery. Uh, Ron Bryan and Beulah Ziegler uh, battling with Parkinson's disease. Brandy Bryant and Nick Searcy recovering from stroke. And Brandy also dealing with an issue with her red blood cells and bone marrow that we're waiting to hear back on. Louise Horn has a blood disorder and needs God's miraculous touch today. James Pearson, high blood pressure. And then we have several others that are battling cancer. Brother Steve Williford, early stage prostate cancer. Jamie Dixon, end stage cancer and inoperable cancer. Uh, Michael Bolin and Delbert Bryant, both with stage four lung cancer. Diane Escher um, and Caden, also fighting cancer. And Lorelei a little child with leukemia. And we know God cares about our needs today. I, mean, I just sense God's presence today wanting to move and wanting to help us. And I believe that there's going to be a special work that takes place in prayer this morning. I sense that in the Holy Ghost. Let's continue to remember Carmen and her daughter Grace. Amen. For healing, for a special touch from God today for Grace. And for Carmen, for God's wisdom and God's strength today. Amen. We have unspoken requests for Josh and Amanda, for Angela, and for Jamie uh, that we've been praying for for many days, and we want to continue to believe God to move in their needs this morning. We want to remember those that are in nursing homes and assisted living facilities, 
uh, who cannot have visitors. And as the rest of the world begins to slowly transition uh, back into their daily routines, let's not forget those um, that it's so easy for people just to uh, go on about their days and not really think about their suffering and what they're going through. And I'm looking forward to when we can actually get back into the local nursing and rehab center and have services again. I know it's such an encouragement to the residents there. So let's be praying for them. We want to pray for Brenda's family and her church family today. And um, excited for Brenda. Brenda's getting baptized this Sunday in our first service back. And I'm just tickled to death for her. Amen. And what God has done in her life. And, and I know she's been wanting to get baptized for many weeks now. And, um, and this is the perfect opportunity as we're able to go back to the house of the Lord. And uh, looking forward to that great celebration on Sunday. Uh, I believe I've covered all the requests that I've had. If there's more that have come in while I've been talking here, please pray for those needs as we, as we begin our prayer here in a few moments. And it's good to see Brenda joining us today. Twyla, God bless you. Jennifer and Scott, um, good to see Kristen this morning uh, with us. Uh, Judy and Mike praying with us. Beulah, uh, Brother Arnold, God bless each and every one of you. We're so thankful for your important ministry of prayer. And again, it's not my prayers, it's our prayers that are gonna make the difference today because there's power in our unity as we go to the throne of God together and in an attitude of both humility and boldness. And God will move and he will answer prayer. I want to talk to you uh, this morning about the tremendous opportunity that has been afforded to the people of God during this time of crisis. We do not want to miss out on the opportunity that is God-given, that is God-ordained in this hour that we are in right now. And um, I know that my view uh, is very different from the views of some in the ministry. And uh, as I said earlier, you really ought to go back if you haven't done so. Listen to the message that I preached at Greater Vision this past Sunday, and you will see the details of, of my perspective, what I feel that God has shared with me, and that will help you. But, but kind of springboarding off of that and continuing in that vein of thought, I want to talk to you about this great opportunity that we have and that we must not squander uh, as the people of God uh, at, that have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. The Chinese word for crisis is composed of two characters. We know that their language is is a, a pictorial language. And there's two characters there. One is, and obviously I don't speak Chinese, so I'm just going along the best I can. I know that every word is based on inflection, and I don't know the inflection, so uh, I don't want to insult anyone that speaks the language today. Uh, but what I say may not really mean to you what it means to me, because I don't know exactly how to say it. But the first character is called the we. And the second one is called the chi. And they are representing, first of all, danger and opportunity. So in every crisis, there is danger, but there is also opportunity. The we is more completely defined as precarious or perilous, that danger element. And the Apostle Paul prophesied that in the last days, perilous times would come. And so it should not be a surprise to us. We've been forewarned of this, that we would live in days such as these. And I hope you understand that we are living in the prophesied last days. I'm sure that we would all agree that we could describe our time today as perilous times. And you would be able to say that in your own lives, you're feeling the effects of these perilous, precarious, dangerous times. Jesus prophesied of these last days in Luke 21 and 26 when he talked about men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven, he said, shall be shaken. And so if you sense that perilous times taking place, those dangerous times in your own life, you don't have to say amen this morning. You can just say we. You can just say we. Amen. We are living in perilous 
times. But Jesus also said, I'm glad there was a verse 27 after verse 26. He said, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. If all we had to look forward to was more and more of that infernal we, then I wouldn't feel much like doing these daily devotionals. But I'm excited to do it because I know there is something else in this crisis that we have that we can be excited about. There is a chi that has attached itself to the we. And that chi means this, a suitable occasion, a crucial point, a pivot, an incipient moment, an opportune time, an opportunity, a chance, a key link, a secret, a cunning. There's, there's strategy involved in this, and, and we need to understand that we are at a pivot point in spiritual matters today and in the going on in our world. And God has orchestrated some things. He has foreordained and secretly orchestrated an opportunity for the church. He has positioned his church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, for a mighty last day's revival. This is our chance, church. This is our incipient moment. This messed up world has become the church's suitable occasion, and we must take advantage of it today. And I'll make it even more personal this morning by declaring to you that the current broken condition of your own life is the seedbed for a personal revival. It is the key link to spiritual greatness. I was reading last night in Nehemiah chapter 2 and just reflecting on the story of Nehemiah and how he was living in captivity. But in that uh, time of captivity, he somehow, by the grace of God, he ascended to the most trusted position in the kingdom of Artaxerxes, and he was the king's cupbearer. That was a very, very important position because I believe the cupbearer, he had to taste everything that came to the king to make sure it wasn't poison, and, um, and, or he was someone that could, um, was in a position that he could uh, poison the king if he chose to do that. So it had to be a person very, very uh, trusted to be the one to handle the king's drink. And so this was the position that God had placed Nehemiah in. I want to read to you those five verses. It says, And it came to pass in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. And now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid and said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, If it please the king that thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchers, that I may build it. Now, I want to point out to you this morning that uh, Nehemiah and his fellow captives had no doubt talked to one another about this dream of rebuilding Jerusalem many times. It, it seemed like an impossibility, and no doubt it was the subject of much wistful discussion around the dinner table. But we need to understand that we do not just have favor with one another, another, but we have favor with the king. Amen. And God is able to orchestrate things that we could never imagine. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 11, Jesus said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be open. And I don't want you to ever get the impression that we're just knocking on random doors. It's not like when you go out on visitation to invite somebody to church and, and you bark, you knock on one door and you hear a vicious dog on the other side of it and, and you're wishing you didn't knock on the door and you, you don't know what's behind any of the doors. We know that we're knocking on heaven's door. We know that we are asking our heavenly father 
And so when we're asking, uh, we, we can trust that it will be given. When we seek, we know that we will find. And I'm not just speculating that because he goes on in verse 9 through 11 and lets us know who we're asking of. He says, what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? So understand, we are asking of the Lord today, and we know that he's the one who has given us this opportunity. When Ezekiel was carried by the Spirit into that valley of dry bones, it was a moment that was orchestrated in crisis. It was orchestrated by God himself and facilitated by God himself. And he put him there and he helped him to see the opportunity. He saw the crisis. He saw the dry bones. He saw the loss of hope. He saw the hopeless situation, if you will. But then God began to speak to him and God began to tell him to prophesy upon those bones. And then after first prophesying to the bones, to the dead situation, he said, now I want you to prophesy to the wind. I want you to speak to the four winds of God and say, come and breathe upon the slain. And so he showed him a crisis, but he showed him within that the opportunity that existed. Amen. The hand of the Lord was what carried him out there uh, into that valley. And whenever he saw that in verse 3, the Lord said to him, Son of man, can these bones live? In other words, can you see the opportunity in this valley of death and hopelessness? And he commanded him to begin to prophesy upon those bones and then to prophesy unto uh, the Spirit, amen, to prophesy to the four winds. And that's what we're doing this morning as we go to prayer. We're taking advantage of the knowledge we have of divine opportunity. It's not just a, a bad situation, but there's much good that's coming out of this today as the people of God do their job, amen, of, of essential work for the kingdom of God through prayer this morning. And uh, I believe God has great things. As we go back to church services here locally this weekend, there's opportunities present. Amen. God is going to minister in people's lives in a great way. There'll be people there uh, who have not considered church much for, for a long time, but they're coming back and God is going to move in their lives in that service. We need to be ready to take advantage of this great opportunity that we have. It's not danger only that we're in. It's not perilous times only, but these are exciting times for the people of God. And so would you this morning, would you just direct your attention with me? And we're going to prophesy upon these bones today. We have a lot of bones in front of us. We have a lot of, of dead situations, a lot of discouraging things if we look upon it in the natural. But we're going to prophesy upon those bones, the word of God today. And then we're going to turn our attention, amen, to uh, the throne of God and pray for his spirit to move in every need today. And we know that God is going to do that in this present crisis. Would you go to the Lord with me in prayer right now? And let's just ascend into his throne room with praise and with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Lord, we're thankful today for your mercy and your grace. We're thankful for your goodness. Hallelujah. There's no one like you, Lord. There's none that could ever compare to you in your wisdom, in your majesty, in your power. Lord, there's nothing in our lives that have caught you by surprise. In fact, Lord, you're in all of these things. Hallelujah. Your presence is with us. And God, you have set some things up in our lives that appear to be terrible, but they're just miracles in the making this morning. And we want to give you thanks and praise and, and just let you know this morning that we do trust in you. And God, that we do know that you are on the throne this morning, that we do know that you're in control. Hallelujah. And we do know and realize, God, that, that you care for us. And God, you want to minister in our needs today. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for being who you are in our lives. And we give you glory and honor. We love you, Lord. Would you just take a moment, prayer warriors, would you just adore him? Let's just love him. I want you to thank of your blessings this morning. God, I thank you for your salvation. It's so full and so free. 
I thank you, God, for saving me, Lord, from the uttermost. Hallelujah. I thank you for loving me when I was unlovable. I thank you, God, for reaching down further than I could ever reach up. Hallelujah. Making up the difference in my life. I thank you, God, for infusing me with fresh hope. I thank you for the peace that you give. I thank you for the sacrifice of Calvary that's made the difference in my life. Oh, God, I would be lost and undone today because there was nothing I could do in and of myself to earn salvation. But you brought it to us, God. Hallelujah. I thank you for your precious blood. I thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice, for that ultimate sacrifice so that we could be redeemed. I thank you for pouring out your Holy Spirit, Lord, in our lives. I thank you, God, for directing us day by day and for giving us your word, Lord, that we can walk in, we, that we can walk in the light, that we can understand that you are in the word, you are in that light, and you are directing our paths. I thank you, God, that we can have fellowship one with another because of your precious blood that covers us, and that we can have fellowship and communion with you this morning. Oh, we give you praise. We understand, Lord, that we are privileged people today because we can come into your throne room. Hallelujah. With boldness, we can seek you in our time of need. And when we seek you, Lord, you always answer. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. And we continue to pray, Lord, for all these that are struggling with the effects of coronavirus, Lord. We pray for Brother Eli Hernandez. We thank you for the miracle that you've worked in his life, uh, this ongoing miracle. And we pray, God, that you would be glorified in this situation. We pray, God, that he would continue to be restored today. Hallelujah. Let your power, let your healing virtue flow today and continue to flow into his body. Let the doctors continue to be amazed and confounded by what's been happening, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for that treatment, to, Lord, with the plasma antibodies that was administered yesterday, that it would have that positive effect that's intended. Let his kidneys continue to be restored in Jesus' name. We pray for Bishop Hibbert, Lord, for James and Irma today, for Jessica. We pray for uh, Miss Missionary Judy McCarthy's family, for her mother and her father and her sister. Lord, as they're all battling coronavirus this morning, we pray especially, Lord, for her father who's struggling so much right now against that disease. Let his body begin to fight back, Lord. Strengthen his immune system right now. In Jesus' name, we pray your protection upon every worker, Lord, everybody that's going back to work uh, this week. And in many areas, Lord, the states are opening and they're going back out there, Lord, we pray that you would protect them. We pray there would be no resurgence uh, of the virus uh, in these communities, Lord, where we have reached the peak and begin to come down the other side. We pray your protection for each one, Lord. We pray for full economic recovery. We pray for wisdom and guidance for our president today in handling this crisis. We pray, Lord, that the strain on our health care system would ease, that the supply chain would remain intact, that you would protect all of the truck drivers that are on the road today that are carrying supplies. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, have your way, Lord. Tara, Lord, we pray for her this morning, for her friend Beverly. We pray, God, for Beverly that as she goes through surgery tomorrow, God, that you would be with the doctors, that you would protect her, Lord, that there would be a good resolution, Lord, to this situation for her. Guide their hands, we pray, in Jesus' name, and let your healing touch be administered to her right now. In Jesus' name, encourage her, Lord. Strengthen her against fear today and deliver her, we pray. We pray for Sylvia, Lord. You see the stress that she's under. And we just pray, God, your strength upon her right now, Lord, that you would touch her mind in this moment. God, that you would give her peace in this situation and give her direction. We pray for Adam Lane today, God. We believe you for healing in his body. Hallelujah, Lord, do a special work in his family today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray for these, Lord, that have been laid off from their jobs. Lord, that they would be able to go back to their jobs and earn a living for their family the way they desire to do it. We pray, God, for Jonathan, Lord, that he would be able to go back to work today. We pray for Elizabeth, Lord, for a miracle in her job situation. In Jesus' name. We pray for Brother Arnold's mother today, Lord. We pray for her kidneys 
to re be restored, for them to begin to function properly again in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, for Brother Carlton Kuhn and for his family. Lord, comfort their hearts in this season. Strengthen them, Lord, as they have strengthened so many others over the years and minister to them in their times of distress and their times of grief, Lord. Now I pray that it will be reciprocated to him and to his family. God, that they would receive the strength that they need at this time. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, for Ben and Star. We pray, Lord, that you would help them as they deal with the insurance company for their situation with their home today. In Jesus' name, Lord, we trust in you. We pray, Lord, for Marcia and for Pam today, for their children, Lord. God, draw all their kids back to you, moving their needs, Lord, spiritually today, and also the physical needs that they have. In Jesus' name, we ask today for uh, Pam Bunch, Lord, for her father-in-law and for her mother dealing with stomach issues. And we pray against that cancer in her father-in-law's body today. And we believe you, Lord, for healing for his body right now. We believe you, God, for continued recovery for Gerald today and for Brandy and for Nick, Lord, as they battle against uh, this effects of stroke and for Gerald, that brain surgery that he's been through and the trauma that his brain has been through, God. We believe you for complete recovery of the mind today. We pray for Brandy, Lord, that her blood cells will begin to behave properly in Jesus' name, Lord, let there be healing into the very bone marrow in her body today. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, for my dad and for my mother-in-law. We believe you, God, for healing today for them from Parkinson's disease. Lord, you're the master of every situation. You're the healer of every disease. There's nothing too hard for you today, God. Hallelujah. 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 We pray for James today, God for healing of his hypertension right now. We pray, God, for all these that are battling cancer, for Brother Williford, Lord, for Jamie Dixon, for Michael Boland, for Delbert today, for Diane and for Caden, for Lorelei today, God. In Jesus' name, we believe you, Lord, for healing right now. We pray for Carmen today. God, we pray you would give her victory over fear. We pray, God, that you would give her victory today, God, and give her wisdom. Hallelujah, God, as she's searching for answers today. Hallelujah, we know that you have the answers and you have the direction that she needs. Speak a word to her this morning, God, that will carry her through this day. We pray for grace, God, for healing, Lord, today, that you would touch both her body and her mind and her spirit, that she would be made whole right now in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, for Josh and Amanda and for Angela and for Jamie Cooper today, God. You know the needs that they're dealing with in their lives, and we believe you, God, for the answer. Hallelujah. We pray for all those that are in nursing homes right now, those that are in assisted living facilities that perhaps feel so alone and forgotten today. We pray, God, that you would encourage them. We pray, God, that they would come soon, that we would be able to go back and minister to them. Lord, help us to find ways, Lord, to minister to them from a distance today. Hallelujah. Have your way, God, in every need, we pray. We pray for Brenda's family today. We pray for revival in her family. We know that you're working, God. And even as you've been working in her life, you're working, God, in all of her children's lives today. Hallelujah. Bless our church families today, God. Grant revival in every community. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us not squander this opportunity that you've given us. In Jesus' name, we seek your will in all these petitions this morning. We trust you for our daily bread in both the natural and the physical. You're the supplier of every need, and we give you praise. Hallelujah. Let's just close this prayer out with worship right now. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing our petitions today. We thank you, God, for caring for us. And as we've knocked on the door today, as we've asked in your name, as we've sought according to your instruction, we know, Lord, that it's your good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And we know, God, that you're moving right now and you're answering our prayers. And we give you all thanks and praise in the lovely and matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you for joining me once again for morning prayer and devotion. I look forward, I anticipate, amen, being able to come back here again tomorrow, Lord willing, 
and let's pray together again. Invite someone to pray. Share this video, and um, and let's draw others into this prayer network, amen, as we do this uh, important work of ministry of prayer. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow morning.